When you watch Joseph paint, his brush just flies around the painting. I think, you know, he's so instinctive and he's, he's been doing it so long. He's just so aware of how wet the paper is and how much pigment he has on his brush. And he knows exactly what it, the mark is going to do when he does it. If you paint in watercolor, you've probably heard of Joseph Zbukvich. He is one of my favorite artists. And I was able to take a workshop with him back in 2017. And I was very inspired and challenged and he was very kind to me and encouraging. So this book is special to me, it means a lot. And I thought I would flip through a little bit and give you a look. Just every page is just page after page of beautiful, incredible, inspiring work. He just gets such beautiful softness in his work and his values and man, very inspiring. Very inspiring for sure. He has some beautiful scenes of Venice and beautiful beautiful beach scenes in Australia. He does a lot of horse racing paintings. Um, he does beautiful landscapes and pastoral paintings. A lot of boat scenes. He's really fantastic at painting water. Very inspiring. I've always loved his street scenes, his wet streets that he paints so well. Um, been a big inspiration for me, for sure. Beautiful farm scenes. He's so good at creating the right amount of interest in the foreground, the right amount of characters on his stage, as he would say, and treating the background with just enough detail and just enough interest to make it all work. Nothing's competing with each other. And I feel like that's something that's so challenging to do. One of many skills that he has. When I did a workshop with him, I remember he did one, a landscape scene like this where it was just this view of a valley that you could see for miles and miles and miles and seeing how he was able to come in and just treat this distance so beautifully and smoothly and then come down and make this, this all one big connected shape that leads up to the foreground. Very inspiring and instructional on composition and the necessity to connect shapes. Some more landscape, beautiful Paris scene. Again, all this is one big connected shape. Yeah, he's really known for these Paris street scenes. It's beautiful. Here's one from San Francisco, which is kind of fun. Oh, this is just gorgeous. It amazes me how much can be stated with such little detail. If you look at the middle of this painting, it's just really soft, almost not even there. But the definition of the buildings and the, the little ripples in the water and the man on, in the boat, that's all the detail you need. I mean, that, 
that unlocks everything else. Like this can be nothing and it all makes sense because he has the right amount of detail. Oh, this is just beautiful. So good at capturing light. Early on, my values were never strong enough. And so if you don't have strong enough values, if you're not getting dark in your painting, you're not gonna get the light in your painting. And I think early on that was something I struggled with. Um, something I still have to think about too, as I paint. Another beautiful Paris scene. a New York scene. He gets so much animation and life in his figures too. He uses really thick paint and confident brush strokes and those in contrast with this, all the softness that you have in the painting and just really works. I love these two, this rice patty in China so much softness and just letting watercolor be watercolor and adding dark, thick paint into really soft washes and letting water flow down and run around it and using a little bit of gouache to bring out highlights in, in a few spots. It's just really beautiful. Soft reflection with a couple hard edges on, the, on important areas. Really, he just has a, a masterful handle of the medium. He's been doing it for 40 years. Oh, that's so pretty. Powerful painting. If you look at this, it's all one shape, all connected. I think this is fascinating too that half of this painting or a third of this painting over here is really nothing. One big vague shape but you pop in enough details. It's just some dots for some figures. A little bit of color brings your eye here and everyone's going to look at the Eiffel Tower. Just enough detail to make it all work. A lot of lessons there. Beautiful soft wash, soft transition and colors and value. Going in with a little bit of gouache for some of the highlights to break up the shapes. Wow. Paris in the rain. Yeah, very inspiring. Oh, I love that. Those, that large, soft shape just tells the whole story. And then coming through here and connecting all of this, there's not much that's on its own. There's a few little pieces that are on their own, but everything else is connected. Just enough brush marks to illustrate cows and people and vehicles. calls that the jewelry of the scene. 
The jewelry gets all the credit, but this painting would not work if the values weren't correct for the sky and the ground and the background. Yeah, I'll skip, skip ahead a little bit. Just beautiful work. Beautiful landscape. I love how he connects the the middle ground all the way to the sky with a little bit of smoke from this chimney here, a low hanging cloud over the this hill in the background. When I was in his workshop, he talked so much about connections, connections, connections. He said that the, the, the birds in the sky were Velcro that connects the rest of the painting, connects this part of the painting with the sky when he would use birds to do that. Always trying to find connections, always breaking things up. Oh, I love this one. So simple. But right away, the sense of light you get on this building leads you right down to where this figure is. Beautiful. Wonderful work. A lot more color in this painting. When you watch Joseph paint, his brush just flies around the painting. I think, you know, he's so instinctive and he's he's been doing it so long that uh, he's a hard one to watch and just pick things up on real, real easy because you can't, he just knows what he's doing and he does it. And his brush will dance around and and uh, knocking a figure and he's just so um, aware of how wet the paper is and how much pigment he has on his brush and he knows exactly what it, the mark is going to do when he does it beautiful just the connection of the building all the way down into the the reflection down here in the water just great Oh, that's incredible. If you squint at this painting, typically in, in a lot of paintings, the sky is one of the brightest parts of the painting, but this area being lit up down here in kind of a, in a spotlight from the sun is definitely the brightest area with that being the focal area. in this bit of river, just leading you into the painting all the way up to the top, back down to the trees, just a great composition. And then this last part of the book is a lot of his sketches. He, he likes to visit the racetrack a lot and sketch jockeys on horses and it's really a cool subject. He handles it so well. Beautiful. Yeah, he's done a few airport paintings too. It's fantastic. Just enough detail. And again, all of this is connected. I guess that's the theme. <laughs> use some gouache for these figures, I'm sure. But it's just enough detail. He was really concerned about probably this large wash. He knew where he wanted the brightest part of the painting to be, 
to darken it up as he comes down to the foreground. Looks like he went in and either re-wet and painted this part or um, painted it before it was completely dry and then added in some of the more dry brush strokes after it was dry. The timing is so crucial. And then here's a, there's a lot more of his sketches in the back. He sketches people in cafes a lot. Just anywhere he goes, he always has a sketchbook. And when I was um, in his workshop, he just passed it around and let us flip through it, which was pretty fascinating. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was inspiring for you. It makes you want to keep striving and keep pushing. Keep getting better. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you next time.